one of the commodities needed in Korea today. In many similar plants, items essential to the everyday lives of a free people are now manufactured in sufficient quantity to put on sale at low prices. After the elaborate handwork is finished on these rubber shoes, they will be vulcanized in an oven, made possible through American aid. The rapidly expanding textile industry, too, makes use of women's skills. The cotton cloth turned out by this mill will find its way into shops and market stalls throughout the Republic. With every bolt produced, the wages and profits that result serve to strengthen a growing economy and help a steadily rising standard of living. Heavy industry, too, has benefited from American assistance. Whereas communist troops stripped much of the machinery and industrial equipment from North Korea, the American army has helped the South Koreans to take on an increasing production task with each passing year. The tin cans manufactured in this plant in turn feed other essential industries. Where opposing armies struggled for control only a few short years ago, and artillery churned the wet earth, rice is grown and harvested to feed a hungry people. Although the Korean climate is harsh compared with much of Asia, the rice which grows here is of the best quality and highly regarded throughout the Orient. Nowhere so much as in the quiet rice paddies of today is the feeling of peace and serenity more apparent. A moment's pause here, and one understands Korea's ancient name, Chosen, the land of the morning calm. In the mountains to the north stands the reason for the serenity. Stretching across the narrow peninsula for 151 miles along a well-forged defense line are the last outposts of freedom the forward positions of the United States Army. Here on a remote hilltop overlooking the demilitarized zone which separates United Nations forces from the communist armies and North Korea from the Free Republic of Korea, soldiers of the 1st Reconnaissance Squadron, 9th Cavalry stand guard. Constant surveillance of any communist activity across the valley is necessary and the soldiers report anything they see. They also keep notes for a detailed record of the time they are on watch. At Panmunjom today, the ceasefire is administered jointly by United Nations and Communist officers. Five high-ranking men from each side compose the 10-man military armistice commission. Theoretically, it is their job to iron out any difficulties arising from violations of the ceasefire agreement. In actual truth, no single difference of opinion has ever been settled through negotiation. The communists have routinely persisted in using the commission as a forum for their propaganda, while consistently violating many of the clauses in the truce agreement. The group discussion at the meeting shown here was initiated by the communists on their claim that one of their sentries had intercepted and captured a South Korean spy. In order to determine the facts of the situation, if at all possible, a joint observer team, also composed of officers from both sides, journeys to the scene of the alleged violation. There, they are expected to gain as much first-hand information as possible before reporting to the commission. They study the area and interrogate any of the men connected with the incident. 
In this case, a well-coached communist sentry furnishes more than enough information. But long experience has shown that little can really be accomplished here. To all realists along the truce line, it is clear that our best hope for peace lies in our image of strength. And Korea today, with her growing prosperity, is a vital part of that image. Her factories flourish. Her food harvests are abundant. Her people working closely with American soldiers and the soldiers of all the United Nations have accomplished a miracle in a few short years. Her defenses, supported by American troops, are strong and ready. The American soldier guards Korea. Superbly equipped and hardened by long training, he watches and waits. He guards Korea, but he guards the city limits of every American community as well. The big picture is an official report for the armed forces and the American people. Produced by the Army Pictorial Center. Presented by the Department of the Army in cooperation with this station.